Good morning, everyone. It's a joy to welcome everybody to our service this morning. And as you can see from the screen, today is all about Anna. And um, uh, actually, I was just reflecting on that photograph, Anna. It's such a lovely photograph, but it is just so you. That smile has been ever present on your face from the moment that we first met you. And uh, lovely to see that, uh, although we're very sad that you are still, uh, still smiling today. So very special, special welcome to you today, in particular if you have, um, and I can see a few people who have come back today because uh, they want to say farewell to Anna. And I'd also like to say a very, very particular welcome to Anna's mum and dad. Um, they're here today. And, uh, <laughs> and we've, we've, got to, we've got to know mum and dad William really very well over the last few years, and so it's lovely that uh, that, that you're with us today, and, and, and to you especially, be assured that as you say farewell to Anna, she will always be in our hearts and in our prayers, as you will, and please don't be strangers to us, nor you as well. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're going to, uh, to move on now. Let's just take a moment of silence as we just draw near into God's presence, and as we reflect on a service of, of worship that we're about to embark, embark on. And please stand for our opening greeting. God is our strength and refuge. God is our good news for all people. God is our joy and our salvation. And our worship group, it's a joy to have so many young people um, from our worship group this morning. And I've just heard Anna tell them that it's going to be the best ever. Um, and they're now going to lead us uh, in praises rising, eyes are turning to you. Thank you. 
Please be seated. And in a, in a moment of quietness, let us just think of those things for which we want to say sorry to God. Things that we're not happy about in the past week. Things that we've either done or said or shouldn't, should have done but didn't. And let's just think about those for a moment. Say sorry to the Lord. Lord, you are holy, pure, and full of forgiveness. For words spoken which I know were wrong before you. Father, forgive me and restore my fellowship with you. Through Jesus, shed for my sin. For thoughts which I know were wrong before you. Father, forgive me and restore my fellowship with you. Through Jesus, blood shed for my sin. 
for the things I have done with my hands and feet, which I know were wrong before you. Father, forgive me and restore my fellowship to Jesus' blood shed for my sins. Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Go now and leave your life of sin. And in response, we say together, we will live for Jesus. We will love for Jesus. We will walk in step with Jesus. Amen. And we say together the Christian family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for today, the fourth Sunday before Advent. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, this morning, as we've been doing each Sunday at the beginning of the month on our family service, we have been trying to learn a Bible verse together that all the children are learning in Sunday School Inspire. They're all out there doing it and learning these verses, and we're going to try and learn them as the adults of the church as well this morning. So, this one Ava has chosen. It's a little bit random, Ava. Where are you, Ava? I can't see you. Where are you? Wave at me, Ava. Oh, she's away down the back. It's a random one. And I don't think I've ever learned this as a memory verse in my life. So here we go. We're going to learn this together. So after three, I want us to read this out, starting with Mark chapter 1, verse 2 says. Okay, after three. One, two, three. Mark chapter 1, verse 2 says. written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Okay. Now, Eva, can you come up to the front for me a moment? Because I want to ask you why we're learning this verse. Come on right up beside me, Eva. Um, Eva's had a busy weekend. Eva, we want to say thank you for last night. Uh, Kaz said to me as we drove out the gate, that was the best short church event I've ever been at. So well done. Well done, Eva. Yeah. That was her word. So... She said a bit more, but, you know, hold on, Eva, my wife is a bit frozen here. Let's get that out. Right, Eva. How's that? Thank you. So, Eva, tell us why we're learning this first. Well, many reasons. The first one is that it's part of a program that we follow. <laughs> but the other reason is that, um, well, one, I personally love when the New Testament and the Old Testament collide. Um, we see that throughout the Bible about 60,000 times. Yep. So this is a great example of that. Um, but also we're learning about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is obviously... The one we're talking about here. Yeah. Wow. Eva, we love what you do in Sunday School and Inspire. We just love it. Well done. Keep doing it. And now we know why we're learning this first. It's all about John the Baptist. Give Eva a round of applause. Yeah. We're going to try and learn this, guys. It's not easy, but we're going to try and do it. I can get my, my, uh, my video mic back up and running. So, next slide for us, please. So, this is not easy. Who thinks they can add in the words already? Who thinks they can fill the blanks already? Who would like to go at this? Filling the blanks already. As it is, what do we think? So who's going to go through the first word? Written, look down at the back. Well done, look as it is written in. Now, who knows the next word? Oh, Jenny, you're so clever. Right? As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my. Gosh, you're such good pupils. Who, you, ahead of you, who will prepare. Honestly, I have never had a class like this in my life before. This is amazing. Right, let's get, get rid of a few more words for us there, Trevor. Ah, now it'll get more difficult. No, I'm going to pounce on someone. Okay, so let's see who's been really listening here this morning. 
And who can help me? Everybody's now getting nervous. Amy! Let's do it, it's Amy! No, Amy, I, I, I reckon you, you've got this, Amy. But Amy, I'm going to tell you, tell you what, if, if you can't, Granny and Granny can help you. Right? You can turn to Granny for help, right? But Amy, let's see if you can do this. Okay. I said it's written in Isaiah, the prophet. <laughs> I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Wow! Woo. That is that is amazing, right? Let's see. Let, let's go to the next one, Trevor. Oh, nice! Oh ho! We've got somebody over here. Who's this? We're going to Charlie. Come on up the front, Charlie. Or oh, Charlie, do you want me just to pass you the microphone there, Charlie? Okay, let's see if you can do this, Charlie. Let's try. I'm not on to you, so Charlie, right away you go. It is written in, in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, and we'll, we will prepare your way. Um, Charlie, um, I really like this story. Charlie has worked out that there's a Bible in the pew. It's so good. Now I know why Denny got it right first time. Charlie, that was excellent. I like your style. Keep reading the Bible, Charlie. It's good. So, next slide. Uh, uh, let's just say this together from the top. Mark chapter 1, verse 2 says, As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Now, the test is, when we're having the lunch today for Anna, Anna and I are going to go round and sit down at your table, and we're going to say, Mark chapter 1, verse 2 says, and you're going to say this verse for us. Okay, I'm trying to be there with the Bible to make sure I know what to do. Okay, that's what's going to happen later on. So obviously today is a very special day, Anna. Um, what can I say about this girl, this lady? I have known Anna since she was 10, and every bit of that has been a privilege. The privilege of knowing Anna Williams is honestly second to none. It's a joy to me to know Anna. And this morning when we wrote that, those words about you, Anna, this morning, I mean, when we pray for you, when I think about you, joy wells up in me. There's a little bit of sadness today as well. For all of us here this morning, Anna, there's a little bit of sadness because when God gives us something good, we want to hold on to that thing. But we know that we have got to let you go. Uh, because God has called, and one of the things that Anna has been saying to us this morning in our 8.30 and our 9.45, we're really getting our money's worth out of her. She preached. This will be the fourth time she has spoken when she speaks for us. She's been talking about the call of God. And God has called Anna out from among us to go and do a new thing. But I think Trevor's got a few memories of you, Anna, um, that he's going to um, let us see here and listen to this morning. That's the kid's song, Trevor. We don't want that. You have to click out, Trevor, and click back in, I think. That's it, so you're getting... See? I've got really high paid technical staff. They're brilliant. No pressure, Trevor. <laughs> I went too early. I was meant to be later. Oh, oh. Let's get some volume and we're away. Oh, there's no volume. Oh dear.
I know you're not meant to cry, are you, Anna? But, look, those were just my little memories of Anna. Things that really touched our lives as we have known this girl uh, since she was a child and so now she's just one of the most amazing leaders of God's church. And I know that um, what God has started this morning, that little Philippians passage says, the good work that God has begun in Anna, he will bring it to completion. We have so much more of your story to watch and to hear. And as you go from us, Anna, we simply want to send you with the blessing of the Lord Jesus on your life and wish you every blessing. And I want to say a thank you to you as a church this morning. Something, something that you have done today is what I call a love gift. And you've given Anna a love gift because she has been with you in the really hard places. Anna has been alongside you when life got broken and came off track. And she has loved you and been able to love her back. She's been with us at the high point, the parties, the birthdays, all those things. She's been there. But Anna has loved us freely with her everything and with her all. And we just want to ask her First of all, I want to say thank you to you for your generosity, to Anna. She has no idea how generous she's been. You've been hugely generous. It's class. I love it. But actually, for that generosity, and over these last three weeks, we as a vestry came to you and said, would you help us look after all the buildings around this place and our Inspire Mission team? And you came up with over £10,000, which is just amazing, just for that. And then we came back at you and said, would you help us say goodbye to Anna? And you came again with generosity. Church of Jesus Christ, you have been good to God. And I promise you, God is no man's God. He will be good to you as you are good to him. So I'm going to ask Diane if she would come and present Anna with her gift for the fourth time this morning. morning in the vestry, uh, Anna was telling me a lovely story about one of the previous curates who left here, and um, he got given the same en- envelope as Anna, and when he opened it, it was empty. And what he didn't know is that the practice of this church is not to give checks, but to just direct, directly send it into your bank account. He went home really disappointed, afraid to say, they didn't love me. Anna, there's nothing in the envelope, but don't be disappointed. We love you. We're going to sing our children's song this morning together. Um, I think it is Lighthouse, is it, Ava? Yeah. Uh, can we have some help up the front? I need help with actions up here. So if you know the actions for this song, I need you up the front. Come on, boys and girls, let's get out of our pews and come up and teach us it. Oh, well done, Amy. We love it. Now, just before, hold on, we need to do another impromptu thing. Blake, is there something special about today? Can you tell us what's special about today? Oh, I need to speak into the mic. What's special? Will we sing happy birthday to Blake here? Happy birthday to you. 
Okay, let's stand up and we're going to sing this song together. I don't know what I'm going to do when Anna's not here. Normally I look at Anna when I'm lost and she sort of nods and says, do this. So uh, somebody else is going to have to do that for me in the future. We're now going to have our Bible reading from Judges chapter 6. And Charlie is our reader today. Where is Charlie? Charlie who read for me. Come on, Charlie, let's come and do the reading for us this morning. Thanks, Charlie. Thank 
greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all love your love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well well said, teacher, the man replied, You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbour as yourself is the most important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and from then no one dared to ask him any more questions. Our second reading comes from Judges 6, 1 through 18. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the Israelites planted Other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock in their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian was so impoverished that Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians, and I delivered you from the hand of all of your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joshua the Abizan, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but the Lord is with us. Why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. This is the word of the Lord. Eva deserves a round of applause. She said all the big words. <laughs> and she had no preparation for it. She just got a nod before the reading. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing it. As we come now to dig more into Judges chapter 6, shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we do give thanks for your word, which speaks to us today words of life and hope and encouragement. Come now by your spirit, we pray, to open our hearts to your word and your word to our hearts and make us ready and willing to respond to you in faith and in obedience, in Jesus' name. Amen. Last night we had Superhero Saturday, and lots of you came dressed up as superheroes. Who was dressed up as a superhero last night? Willie and Ava definitely were, but I know there were a few others. There were some incredible superheroes in the church hall yesterday evening. When we think of superheroes, we tend to think of people with superpowers. Maybe the ability to fly, or maybe super strength, or maybe the ability to make themselves invisible, some kind of power that you ordinarily wouldn't have. This morning, if you could have any super power you wanted, what would you choose? 
tell the person beside you what superpower you would choose if you could have whatever you wanted today. Some people in church getting very excited about their superpower potential. Are there any really good ones? Anyone want to shout out their superpower of choice? What would your superpower be? Invisibility, good one. What about you? What would you go for? Say it one more. Flying, good one. Flying. Anyone else want to go this side? Any superpowers? Telepathy, oh, that's a really good one. All right, Luke, I know you have a superpower in mind. What would it be? Ooh, fancy. Willie Nixon says, staying on a diet. <laughs> Some people's dreams are smaller than others. <laughs> Superpowers would be kind of handy, from the little things to the big things. But actually, day to day, when you need help, if you get hurt or if you have a bad day, if you fall down, who do you call when you need help? Willie well, says, Kaz, and that's very wise. If I need help, I call my mom. Hi, mom. But if something's broken, I call my dad. Hi, dad. Or sometimes Trevor, hi, Trevor, is actually just as good. When I got locked out of my house a little while ago, my dad came. I called him because the lock was broken. My dad came to see if he could fix it, and he brought tools and WD-40. But Trevor, he came. He brought a ladder, climbed through my bedroom window, and opened the door for me. The saying is true, not all heroes wear capes. Today in our Bible reading, we learn a beautiful truth. True heroes are ordinary people who do extraordinary things with God and for God's glory. We meet in Scripture from our reading in Judges a very unlikely hero, a man called Gideon. He didn't really look much like a hero. He didn't have any superpowers, but God sees what others couldn't see. And so God calls Gideon to do great things, to be a hero of God's people, a hero of the people. Francis Schaeffer, a famous American pastor, he wrote that most Christians take an honest look at themselves and conclude that their limited talents, energy, and knowledge mean they don't amount to much. But Schaeffer says, there are no little people. It doesn't matter what age you are, from the youngest to the oldest, it doesn't matter if you're super talented or it doesn't matter if you don't have any superpowers. It doesn't even matter if you can't stick to your diet. In God's kingdom, there are no little and no unimportant people. And today in our Bible reading, we hear an invitation to each of us to respond to God's call and so to do great things with our great God. But I need your help this morning to tell Gideon's story and to learn from it together that heroes of the faith are called to do great things with God. Eva and I were talking yesterday evening and I said, don't worry, I can predict what tomorrow will be like. Willie Nixon is a man who likes to go for the cry. He'll make something emotional and he'll do a beautiful video and everyone will be very upset. So instead, I am not going for the cry. I'm going to make you all do actions and fight really loudly in church this morning. So... This morning it's going to take some careful listening and some really good actions from people of all ages, to the youngest, to the oldest. When I say hero, you have to do your best superhero fly. And Willie Nixon says this needs a sound effect too. So, hero. Let's hear it. Hero. Okay. When I say call, you have to shout at the top of your voice, the Lord is with you. Because... We heard from our reading, that's what Gideon is told, and that's what we need to remember when God calls. When I say great, you have to shout hallelujah. Let's give it a go. Willie is really keen this morning. He's ready to go. He just loves starting in church. When I say great, because it means praise the Lord, because beginning to end, God works in and through and for his people, and he is the one who does great. Things. So, are we ready for them all together really quickly, one after the other? Heroes of the faith are called to do great things with God. Before we meet Gideon, we hear some bad news from the people of Israel. It was at the very start of our Bible reading. The Israelites have done evil in the eyes of the Lord. This is the pattern of the book of Judges, and it sometimes hits pretty close to home for us as well. These are God's chosen people, not walking in God's chosen way. 
And in our reading this morning, the Israelites are suffering because of these decisions. The Lord has given them into the hands of the Midianites, and they are making it really hard for the Israelites to survive. These are people who desperately need a hero. Who will help to save them from this disaster and who will help to guide them back on the right way? And so these people cry out to God for help. Here, the Israelites are asking God to keep his promise to them, to be, his, to be their God and for them to be his people. Even though they have broken all of their promises to God, even though they have been unfaithful as his people, they're crying out to God and asking him to do a great thing and save them once again. They're asking God for a hero. And when the Israelites call, see, the Lord, a beautiful thing happens. God proves that he has not abandoned his people. He is faithful, though they have not been. And this is a great truth for us to take hold of today. It is the truth that God hears and answers when his people cry out to him. Our God is faithful. In my first year here, perfectly timed, right before Christmas, just as things were getting really busy, I slipped on the stairs on my way out to midweek communion on the Wednesday before Christmas and broke my foot. Lying at the bottom of the stairs, I rang my parents for help. And they didn't say, although I don't know what they actually thought, but they didn't say, oh, you shouldn't have been, you shouldn't have been that, that accidental on the stairs. You should have been more careful as you walked down the stairs. You shouldn't have been in such a rush. Instead, they just came and they helped, thankfully, because I wasn't going too far without them that day. If our parents come when we need help, how much more will our God, who is faithful, hear our call? How much more will our God, who is faithful, hear our call and answer us? The Lord who is with us, he sends the Israelites a prophet to remind them of who he is and of all the great things he has done. He is the God who brought them out of slavery in Egypt. He rescued them. He delivered them. He gave them a promised land. He was with them, but they did not listen to his call. And yet now, when they cry out to him, God is not silent. This is a fundamental thing for us to learn about the character of God. When his people call out, that was an accidental one on my part, but it's still true. <laughs> when his people call to him, he is, comes answering with pure grace, undeserved yet freely given by our great God. And this is the heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Scripture tells us God demonstrates his love for us in this, while we were still sinners, while we were far off, Jesus died for us. And all that comes before Jesus in our Bibles is always in anticipation, a foreshadow, a glimmer of hope of that great climax, of that great climax, that finally finished work of salvation in Jesus, who is a perfect hero. Out of his great faithfulness, God makes a way where there before was no way. If you today feel far from God, then hear this truth. Our God is already there, faithfully and patiently waiting with open arms for you to return to him and find yourself at home. Here in Scripture, we learn these eternal truths about God's character, his faithfulness, his heart for those who are far from him. And we also learn something about the way God works. And it has an impact on you and me as disciples of Jesus. God is always in the business of calling ordinary people into a relationship with him in order to do great things for him. So in Judges, when life is a mess for God's people, he calls a hero for them. There's a man called Gideon. He's out at work, threshing wheat, going about his normal day, when an angel of the Lord comes and sits under a tree and calls out, the Lord is with you. Oh, thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And you can picture the scene because Gideon probably looks behind him looking for where this mighty warrior might be. Gideon doesn't think of himself as a mighty warrior. 
This is God's calling an unlikely hero. This is God showing that there are no little people in his eyes. This is God inviting Gideon to be part of something great. Before Gideon will listen to the Lord, he first doubts the truth that the Lord is in fact with him. Then he says that he is definitely not the man for the job, and if we were to read on a bit further, we would see Gideon asking for proof again and again that God is really with him. This doubting, questioning, imperfect, hesitant, and unlikely hero is an encouragement to me in Scripture, and I think an encouragement to all of you as well. We are people who like proof. We like to be sure. We like confirmation, and we are far more likely to underestimate than overestimate our ability. Like Schaefer said, we think we have limited gifts and therefore won't be of much use. We think we are little people, but God says there are no little people in his kingdom. God is faithful to those he calls. God is faithful to those he calls. When, thank you, Willie. Really? <laughs> when it came to my curacy round and the challenge of discerning where God was calling me to spend at least the next three years, I'll be honest. Because you can be honest on your last day when you're about to leave. In that curacy round, Sandbridge was not on my short list. And not because I didn't love you all, not because I didn't love it here, but because I'd already been here and I didn't think that the Lord would call me back. But God, in his graciousness, his infinite patience, and in his abundant kindness, God used others to speak those words of call to me. I told my then deacon rector, rector, Jim, I said, I don't think Bambridge will be on my list. And Jim said, think again. I read God's word and through it, he encouraged and guided me. God made his call clear, even as I doubted and questioned. And I'm so grateful for that. Because here is a place that has always felt like home for me. I've been so blessed by these years of getting to work and serve with you for the sake of God's kingdom. Then, when it came to another unexpected turn of events, to a vacancy after Roderick's retirement, a new call for us as a church family, when we had to cling to that truth that the Lord was with us, I, like Gideon, fell out of my depth. But the Lord who called was faithful, and he had great things in store for us. In an unlikely situation that none of us might have expected, God equipped, guided, and directed. Where I fell short, made mistakes, or fell down, got tired, or weary, God sustained, and he graced all of you with the ability to bear with me in love. And then, thanks be to God, he called a new rector in Willie, and Willie would not be here if it wasn't for God's call. I wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for God's call. And neither would I be leaving here if it wasn't for God's call. To a new thing, I'm definitely clinging to that truth. Gideon, he would have stayed in that field. He would have stayed out threshing wheat, and he never would have become a hero of God's people if it hadn't been for God's call. There's an invitation here to you and to me to think about how God might want to use us. How is God calling you today to serve in a new way? How is he inviting you to shape your life according to his will, to go in the direction that he today is pointing you? Dietrich Bonhoeffer, an American pastor, and one of my favorite quotes for him, he said, we must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. By God. When God calls, even if it's unexpected or unlikely, even if you don't feel like the person for the task, God will make it clear that he can use you for the sake of his kingdom. So be open, even now, to the direction of your life changing, to the pattern of your life being reshaped, as you allow yourself to be interrupted by God, as you surrender yourself to him as a hero of the faith, willing to do whatever God asks, willing and ready to do great things in his name. None of our weaknesses, our hesitations, our doubts, they, none of them matter because of the great truth that we hear in Scripture today. God is with you, and he is faithful to that promise. 
Which brings us back today to the heart of the gospel. The true hero this story of Gideon points us to, and to the great thing that God has done for us because of God's love and his faithfulness, he comes to be with us in Jesus. Jesus, our Savior, fights the battles no other mighty warrior could win. Jesus, our Savior, he defeats sin and death. He puts an end to the cycle God's people were stuck in in Gideon's day, where we and all other heroes of the faith are imperfect and fall short. Jesus, our Savior, is perfect. And now through Jesus, this superhero, that's probably a two-armed one there, I think you've got the right idea. Jesus, our superhero, unlike any other, through him, God calls us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, where we live by grace through faith and share in new life with him. We don't have to do the work of saving like Gideon once did, but we are now saved by Jesus to do great works in his name. Jesus is calling you to be a hero of the faith of his disciple. Ordinary people made extraordinary, filled with God's Spirit, strengthened and sustained by him. Forgiven, redeemed, restored, empowered, and equipped by His Spirit to do great things in His name. That's the call on heroes of the faith. And that's the example you, as heroes of God's people, have set for me. You are a church family who is super powered in your faith, your hope, and your love. You do already great that deserves an extra one. You do great things for God's kingdom, and it's all been a blessing to me, and I'm so grateful to, that you have been examples to me as heroes in God's kingdom. Sunday school, hands up if you're in Sunday school this morning. Sunday school people, hands up. Some boys sing up right there. Sunday school and crash and your teachers and your leaders, you are heroes. You make me more excited about church because you teach us actions to songs with mo- which most of the rest of us get wrong. You teach us memory verses, you teach us Bible stories, and most of all, you make us a lot more excited for church. Inspire. Put up your hand if you're inspired this morning, and all who lead us. You are heroes. You set a godly example to all the believers. You come in huge numbers on Sunday evening. You serve faithfully at just about every event we do. You give up weekends to go and enjoy fellowship and Bible teaching together. You lead us in worship, and don't they deserve a round of applause this morning? You lead us in worship. You're the first to say yes to Bible readings and much, much more. You're brave, bold, and courageous disciples of Jesus who make our church family great. You make our church family great. That's more like in our staff team, our select vestrial who lead and serve to make ministry here possible. And more than that, incredible, you are heroes of the faith. I hope all of select vestry did that one. You are heroes of the faith. You model a servant's heartedness. You encourage, you build up, you imagine God's kingdom, and then you pray and work steadfastly to see that happen. This church is filled with people I am deeply grateful to know as heroes of the faith to answer God's call and so do great things in his name and greater things have yet oh well he says hallelujah hallelujah yes it does and greater things have yet to come because if you knew a place was filled with heroes then your expectations would be incredibly high you would expect amazing and incredible, super hard, great things to happen. And that's what you'll see here. As ordinary people made extraordinary through faith in Jesus, hear and respond to God's call. As you take up your place as heroes in God's kingdom, and to continue to do great things to the glory of God and Jesus, who is our great King. Amen. I always try to, to hear God as we 
that we minister together in, in church. And one of the things that Anna said there, she said about changing direction. I don't know if that's significant for anyone, um, about changing direction. But God might just be saying it's time to change direction. And the thing that really struck me out of the word was this. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Midian, save Israel out of Midian's hands. Am I not sending you? And this morning you might not be brave enough to change direction on your own, but actually I want you to hear this. I want you to hear the Lord say, Am I not sending you? So that change of direction could be a small thing, it could be a mighty big thing that God is asking of you this morning. But you're saying to him, how can I? I'm in the middle of stuff here, God. And he's saying to you, but listen to me. I understand. So I'll just leave that with you before the Lord and see what the Lord does with that word this morning. Anna, that was a great... That was a great... And I feel pain. Now, Anna, you know how hard it is for us. <laughs> Folks, we're going to sing to the Lord again, and during this song, we're going to pick up an offering. offering. Um, praise the Father, praise the Son. Let's stand as the, the band lead us in worship again for the offering.
share together from the words of this previous affirmation. Who did you use on the meet today? Remember those families and citizens who are caught up in these conflicts. Please, Lord, be with them at this time and help the aid agencies to gain access to the war zone areas to come to the assistance of everyone affected. We also pray for those affected by the severe weather conditions of floods in Spain, including the severe Valencia. Lord, we hold those affected in our hearts and pray for the families who have lost someone on from the emergency services as the exhibit the clear up continues. Closer to home, we pray for our politicians and political leaders following the Labour Party's first budget in this parliamentary term. Lord, we pray for wisdom in making critical decisions for the delivery of our public services and for our local businesses, and for helping those most in need. And finally, we pray for the upcoming elections in the U.S. Lord, please be with the American people as they face their votes and look to the future. In Jesus' name, Amen. We pray for families, both our church family and those in the wider community. Help us to strengthen families' means up with both practical and prayerful support. We pray for all the events and groups that welcome families into the church, including Sunday School, Inspire, and Pottery. Thank you for the leaders and volunteers that give us their time to support others. We pray that both children and parents would be encouraged and nurtured in their faith. We also pray for those who may be experiencing mental or physical health difficulties. Let us be a welcoming community where all feel included and valued. Thank you for those who give us their time to do pastoral visits to the hospital. home. We thank you for all the resources which we have as a church. Let us be generous in supporting those who are in need, both in our community and further afield. We pray that the Food Gift Initiative will be well supported by our church and allow us to share God's love in a practical way. Amen. We do thank you so much for um, the opportunity to come to church today. We thank you for the shelter that we set up, and we thank you for your love which finds us when we're here. We thank you um, for our church youth, and we thank you for Sunday School, and we thank you for everyone who helps out there, and um, we thank you for the work that you do here in the 
Um, I also, we also want to thank for Anna. We thank you so much for the blessing that she has been for these past few years. And we pray that you will be with her as she goes through her next session. We pray that um, your love surrounds her and the Holy Spirit that is here. Lastly, I just thank you so much for um, William and his family. We thank you for all the work they have done in our, in our lives and in the church life. And I just pray that they will continue doing this work. Amen. Thanks to the Pope family. That's just lovely to have a family meeting here. Bless you for that. And uh, see their example. And maybe another family would volunteer for next month for the family service to lead our prayers. And we could have grannies, we could have nieces, nephews, we could have a mixed family of all sorts. We'd just love to have people helping us lead the prayers in church. We want to pray for Anna and I. And I'm going to ask Jenny and Alvin to come up to the front as well, because we want to pray for them as a family this morning. And I don't think that anybody realizes that behind the throne of Anna are two amazing people. And Jenny and Arvin, Anna is who she is because of these people. Jenny and Arvin are the most amazing friends to us. Uh, faithful, always, caring, always, loving, always. And uh, we have lots of great memories with them. But Jenny and Arvin, come up to the front and we're going to pray for you and Anna um, in this ministry. And I just want to invite Diane and Rory uh, to come up and prayer as well as we lay hands on this family and just pray over this family and bless them in their ministry. Yes, come on, let's come and do this together as well. <laughs> Arvin doesn't know how to be at the front of the church without a guitar. That's the only way he knows. Um, and we just really want to pray for you as a family. We thank God for you as a family. Um, Jenny, uh, you've invested with Arvon so much in your children and um, that bears fruit onto eternal life. And that blesses me so very, very much. Um, I think we see here what parents, parents are who love their children in the faith and teach them the faith and show them Jesus. And nothing is more lasting than that. Nothing is more lasting or powerful than that. But we want to pray for the, the Williams this morning um, because Jenny and Arvon will go with her at her, her left and her right and will will be her her uh, Aaron and her Caleb as they go uh, into the new ministry in Balnehill. So let's just pray for them. And if you're a person who feels comfortable, reach out your hand and faith to them this morning. Just lift your hand and raise it towards them as we pray today. God, our Father, this morning we give you thanks for the blessing it is to have had Anna Williams a minister among us here in this parish church. We thank you, Lord God, that she has been firstly faithful in her private prayer and devotional life. That she has made sure that she has set aside time with you. And it is in that time that she's been made into the person she is. We thank you, Lord God, for Jenny and Arvon and all that they have shown Anna, all that they have taught her, and all that they mean to her and her to them. We pray that you would really bless this family with all that is good. Father, today we pray over Anna. And we ask, Lord God, that you would fill her now with your holy and life-giving spirit. Be the minister you are calling her to be in Balmahim. Pour down your Holy Spirit on this your servant. I pray that you would prepare the road before her. I pray, Lord God, that already you would be moving the piles of stones, stones that are hard and are facing those with beautiful fleshy hearts that you would be opening up a way for a new ministry that is dynamic and power-filled by your Holy Spirit. So we stand out out from among us with a joy that goes beyond the sadness of the moment as we send her in your name, Jesus, to minister to your people in Balmahim. So may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be on you now. And may you minister powerfully in the name of the living Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Good people. Well, 
One of the things that the church needs to do is three cheers for Anna Williams. So let's do it. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! We thank God for you, Anna. And go and do amazing things. Um, we're going to miss your amazing talent here. We really are. We're going to miss it every day. Um, but give me the phone calls occasionally. I'll phone you often and say, Anna, what will I do? Um, at the moment, I'm phoning up saying, Anna, what's that person like? Are they okay? Will I, will I get on with them? Will they like me? Anna, but genuinely, just go in the power of the Lord. And have an amazing ministry. And God will do amazing things in you as you stay faithful to Him. We're going to sing our last song before we head across to the hall for lunch together. Blessed are those who run to Him. Come home running.
that stack of seats just for me a moment, please, before the end of the service. Just a couple of notices this morning at the end. We're doing it the back, back to front this morning. Women Together Wednesday this week. Um, I think we're doing some sort of pottery for Christmas, which is very exciting. Rhoda's nodding her head down there. Uh, Rhoda's the person who, to see this morning. We're going to talk about Women Together Wednesday the 6th this week in the church hall here. The other thing that's important just to say, next Sunday evening we're going to do something different. Um, our, we're going to have a time of remembering our loved ones who are loved but lost, those who have gone home to be with the Lord, those who have died. And it's going to be one of those services where there's a few tears and hearts will be heavy, but yet also hearts full of thankfulness as we thank God for our loved ones. So if you have someone you'd like remembered in that service, let Dorothy have their name in the office this week and we'll, we'll remember them by name to the Lord, simply thanking God for them and for their life. And we'll pray for you, that God will continue to be your strength, your comfort, and your help. So please be part of that next Sunday. The other thing that's happening next Sunday, obviously, is Remembrance Sunday. And the services are just like they are on the screen. Just notice the difference that at 11.15, we'll be having all the uniformed organizations, which is here in the big church, and really encourage the scouts and the guides and all your friends to come along and be part of that service. The afternoon service this year is in the Methodist Church. And that's at 3.30, and you'd be really welcome to come along to that too. The men, uh, men's group, um, we're meeting again on the 19th of November um, from 7.30. And our speaker is uh, our local councillor, Ian Burns. And he's going to talk about the home rule crisis. I'm guessing it's a history lesson. And we're looking forward to that. And please encourage other folks to come along and to be part of that as we share together. The other thing I just want to say to you in closing this morning is, that this afternoon you're going to see uh, a little advert going out. Uh, it has gone out already live on the Upton website and the Church of Ireland website for a ministry associate, uh, a new role here uh, at St. Patrick. And the ad has, many of you will have seen it on Facebook, but it's going to go out on our WhatsApp group this afternoon so that you can read it and see it. Sam has to go to work. Um, so he's not walking out in protest. Um, so we are really encouraging you to look at that ad, to see that ad, and to ask the question, is there someone we know, someone you know, that God might be calling into that new role here alongside us? It's a huge step of faith. Our vestry has taken a wonderful step of faith in employing this new role uh, and offering this new role in this church. Uh, it's going to have three elements to it, discipleship, uh, worship, and pastoral care. Uh, and we are really excited that it's got an evangelistic edge to it, an outreach edge, uh, especially towards men uh, in the Church of Jesus Christ here at Banbridge and beyond it. So please look at that ad and pray about it. But it's a big step of faith. We also are hopefully going to have a curate next year, so that means huge commitment from all of us. But what God orders, God pays for, and what God asks us to do, He will faithfully provide through His church. And I know that. So I'm just letting you know that. Please pray about that and think about that going forward. The other thing that I want to close with is Anna's special in- in- introduction service. So that's on the 5th of, it's a Thursday evening, the 5th of December, in Balmain Church of Ireland Church. Um, we're going to all bound down there together. I, I think the best we are talking about organizing a coach. I think David was talking about that the other night. We'd organize a coach. So over the next few Sundays, Anna, we're going to be filling a bus. Um, maybe a double-decker bus. Uh, to go and, and make sure that you definitely take up the new role. Uh, but Anna, we are wishing you every blessing for that. And for the next four weeks, Anna's going to try and rest a little bit uh, because she has worked so hard for us and for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Anna, enjoy the rest time um, and go well in the name of Jesus. As your church family, we say go and be God's woman in God's world for the kingdom is to be built. So let's all stand up and we're going to turn into each other. So this side are going to face this side, you're going to turn and face that side, and we're going to say the grace to each other this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and with you always. Amen. God bless. God bless you, Anna. You're going to the big door today. I'll go to the little door. God bless you. Join us for tea.